In this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly how I got an 800 on the math section of the SAT. Getting an 800 is not as hard as you think because the SAT has a fixed syllabus and a consistent style of questions. So all you need to do is make sure that you know the entire syllabus and that you're familiar with the pattern of questions asked. The best way to do this is something I call the mistakes list. This is an Excel sheet where you categorize all of your mistakes during practice into three categories. The first is careless mistakes. Second, mistakes in applying concepts. Third, concepts that you don't fully understand. This is part of my Excel sheet from when I was studying for the SAT. The green color code is for accidental or careless mistakes. In the first column, I linked the question from Khan Academy, which is where I was doing most of my studying from. In the second column, I write down specifically what the mistake was. So for example, in this question, I found the value of C that solves equation 1, but I didn't check if the value actually applies to equation 2. In the third column, I write down a specific solution as to how I'm going to avoid the mistake in future. So here I've written, always check the entire question. This means that when I'm done with the question, I will go back, read the entire question, and make sure that I've solved everything that's asked. Similarly, the blue color code is for mistakes in applying concepts that I already know. For example, in this question, I didn't realize that I could simply use the identity a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b to solve this, and I eventually got a wrong answer. My solution is to know when to use important identities. The moment I see an expression that's written in the form of subtraction of squares, my mind should immediately jump to using this identity. This will help me remember this for future questions that might be similar. The purple color code is for concepts that I don't fully understand. For example, in this question, I knew that the median would be around 4, but what I didn't realize is that the mean has to be greater than the medium because there are more bars to the right side of 4 than there are to the left side. My solution to this is to go back to Khan Academy and review the videos on mean and median, especially in relation to graphs, because I understood that I was having trouble reading graphs related to this concept. In this way, you can clock every single mistake you've ever made. And each time you sit down to attempt a new practice test, go over this list so that you never repeat these mistakes again. This is so helpful because once you do this, you'll start to notice that every SAT has a certain pattern of questions and you can immediately spot where you're missing out. As soon as I started doing this, my score shot up by 50 to 100 points on every practice test I took. So if you do five or six practice tests with this method and make sure to review your mistakes list after each practice test, guaranteed you'll see an improvement in your scores. Now, once you're at a point where you can solve every question, to get an 800, you need to make sure that you get every single question 100% right. And you do this by checking your work. One of the great ways to check your work is called plugging the answer in backwards. This works especially well with algebraic questions. For example, for question 4, I think that the answer is 16, but to make sure, I can plug it in backwards. So, if according to my answer, 8x is equal to 16, x should be equal to 16 divided by 8, which is 2. Now, I substitute this in the original question. So 16 plus 4x should be equal to 16 plus 8, which is 24. This is indeed 10 more than 14, because 10 plus 14 is equal to 24. Because these two answers match, I know with 100% certainty that my answer to this question is correct. Once you've checked your work in this way, you can put a big tick next to the question and you never have to come back to it again. To give you another example, for this question on the right, I think that the right answer is D, but I can confirm by plugging all of the answer choices backwards into the question. So let's begin with A, 0. 0 minus 1 absolute value is equal to 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Therefore, A is wrong. Now coming to B, 1. 1 minus 1 absolute value is equal to 0. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. 
which is not what we want. Therefore, B is also wrong. Coming to option C, 2 minus 1 absolute value is equal to 1. And again, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, which is not equal to 0. Therefore, C is wrong. Now we know for 100% sure that the answer to this question is D, because we plugged all the answer choices in backwards, and D is the only one that fits. Again, we put a big tick next to this question, and we never have to check it again. This tip can be really helpful in catching out those small errors that often prevent people from getting a perfect 800. My third and final tip is for the calculator section, where questions can sometimes be a little bit tricky, but having a graphing calculator makes them so much easier. This is the graphing calculator that I personally use for school. It is linked in the description, but I would recommend that you look for any calculator with a good graphing interface. Now, for example, the question on the left would take a long time to solve manually, but with this calculator, I can simply enter both equations in the y is equal to function. I can simply enter both equations. So in equation 1, I write y is equal to 2x plus 1, and in equation 2, I write y is equal to 0.5x minus 1. Now, I simply press graph, and this displays both equations for me on the screen. Since the inequality sign in the question is greater than, this means that the solution should be above both the red and the blue line. Just by looking at the screen, I can see that quadrant 4 has no solutions to these equations. Therefore, I immediately choose option C as the right answer. A graphing calculator like this can help you get a lot of the questions right quickly and save time. So if you can, I would recommend that you get a good quality graphing calculator and make sure that you practice using it well. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe so you can stay tuned for more content. You can watch my entire college admissions playlist here and my other SAT videos here. Thank you for watching, have a great day and hopefully see you in the next video.